Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. They say this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. I've been meditating on those two verses most of this week for good reason. Um, you know, in the last year, there's been a lot of um, political ideologies that have com come to the forefront of our society. And I'm not really getting into that. Um, you know, it, I'm to just telling for me personally, there's a lot of things that uh, I do not have as much knowledge about as I would like to. And so I, you know, did some research and went about finding some primary documents to start reading, to start educating myself on these issues. And, um, but here's the thing. In the last two weeks, my mind and my heart have been uh, majorly out of sorts. And uh, I apologize to those of you who have experienced that. Um but, you know, I, I say that because it's important to remember that everything we take into ourselves has a major impact on our current uh, spiritual well-being. Everything we take in from the lyrics we listen to, to the TV shows and movies we watch, to the headlines and the books and the novels and the cartoons and the graphic novels and all of that, all of it, everything you take in affects your mind, and affects your heart, and affects your spirit. We see here in these two verses, we see kind of two different ways to approach this. And in verse 1, um, we see a progression of the influence of sin in the life of really anybody, whether it's a believer or an unbeliever. This progression of sin goes like this. It starts with walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Okay, that means following the advice. That means uh, this is what you're taking in. This is what you're listening to. And then you start to conduct your life in this pattern. You're not literally walking down the street. It's the way you're behaving in your life. The ungodly, uh, I looked it up, it is the wicked. So it kind of rolls off the tongue easier who walks not in the counsel of the wicked right? So that's how it starts. You just walk in the counsel of the wicked. The second part of the progression says stands in the paths of sinners. So you start off just by walking and you know, hey, that's a, that's a nice idea. I'm gonna go taste this. I'm gonna go try that. But you know, it's not, it's not what I'm doing. But over time, you just kind of stand there. Okay, this is, this is who you're keeping company with. This is the the habit of your life now, this is where you go to find your satisfaction. You're standing in the path of the sinners. You're with them. You're one of them. Then there's the third part of the progression. And this is the part that really started to hit me because this is where I started acting out in the last two weeks. Um, it says, sits in the seat of the scornful. So what the Lord really showed me recently was when, when I'm sitting in the seat of the scornful, it's not like I'm sitting just in the presence of the scornful. I am the scornful one sitting there because now I'm the one on that seat. Now, here's why that matters. This scornful one, this is a mocker. This is a scoffer. This is an arrogant, prideful, boasting kind of situation where my way is right, and everyone who disagrees with me is wrong, and I'm going to make sure I let you know about it. That's the step of the scornful. It becomes that self-righteous but ungodly, arrogant, prideful judgment against other people. That's the progression. Now, that can affect believers as much as it affects unbelievers. The difference is, as believers... The Lord gives us his Holy Spirit to kind of counteract and to lead us through and to guide us. Because here's the thing, that pattern, it's the pattern of the world. 
But God says we're to live in this world. He doesn't say, I'm going to take you out of this world. He doesn't want to remove us from the world. He's put us here to live in this world because he has a kingdom to build by reaching the lost for his son, Jesus Christ. And he wants us to partner with him to do that. But then if we can't just escape the world to get away from that pattern, what's the answer? And Psalm 2, or Psalm 1, verse 2, answers it in this way. The blessed one, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. So there's two pieces here. First, his delight is in the law of the Lord. Now, this is the Old Testament. This is Hebrew. His delight is in the Torah of Yahweh. It's not just the written stipulations that you have to obey by our distant God on high. This is the personal covenant word God has given us to his personal covenant people. And his delight, his desire, there is a intrinsic quality to this Torah of Yahweh that draws us to it. It is worthy of our desirousness of it. And yet it is a voluntary desire because I have to set my eyes upon it to receive that desire, the desire of the Torah of Yahweh. Now, then we come to the second part. In his law, he meditates day and night. So it's not enough just to, oh, you know, once many years ago, I set my eyes on the Torah of Yahweh and, uh, you know, I'm good to go for the rest of my life. Because as we said, everything you're taking in affects you. So if I'm taking in the world on a daily basis, all day, every day, and once long ago I took in the Torah of Yahweh, which one do you think is going to be driving my everyday thoughts and actions and emotions? The world. That is where the Lord comes in and says, hey, I gave you my Torah because I love you. And this is how you can operate in the world and not participate in it by beginning and ending your day, meditating in my presence. Now, for some Christians, that word meditation is kind of a scary word. It's like a mystical word, a magical word, or, you know, Eastern religion kind of word. But, I mean, let's be real. Christianity is grounded in Judaism, which is, quote unquote, an Eastern religion. The difference is this. All meditation means is to think on it, to dwell on it, to repeat it. Basically, Go to the word, read it out loud to yourself. We're not doing incantations here. Read the word to yourself. Pick a phrase, a word, a verse. I said I've been meditating on these two verses all week. Just reading them out loud to myself. I wrote my little note card. I tried to memorize it. I had to pause a couple times, but I got it. Because when, when you meditate on it, You're more than just reading it. You're more than just studying it. Those are great too. I'm not knocking those. But meditating means to take it in and digest it and just let it sit there and absorb into your heart. So there's the pattern of the world, but God calls us to be in the world and to operate for his kingdom. And this is how he provides for us to do that. He says, come meet with me. Begin your day with me. End your day with me. And then everything in between, I got you covered. But you got to come to me. I'm not going to force you. But that's where that blessing is. And, and that's where, you know, I was, I was getting off track. I was getting off base. You know, the home life has been pretty hectic. So my morning time wasn't going right. And then I get to the end of the day and uh, my, my nighttime was like, I just want to go to bed. And then I was reading these other things that I was self-educating about, which are things to be knowledgeable of but things of the world. So I wasn't getting my God time and I was getting the world time and boy, I was a hot mess. And, um, boy, yeah, but this is, this is my encouragement to you, my edification to you. I, if the Holy Spirit is convicting your heart, great. Let him convict it. I don't need to do that. That's between you and the Lord. But if he is, then, then embrace that because he's saying, come back to me. And let's do this together. And I want to encourage you, just like that song, we want to know you, God. Come to the Lord. 
Make at your habitual practice daily, morning and evening, a couple verses, chapter, verse, reading plan, whatever it is, get in the Word, prayerfully with God, to know Him, to grow in Him, so that you can partner with Him as He leads you to participate in His kingdom work of saving uh, more people, bringing more people into this wonderful family. Um, that's my encouragement for you today. Lord, we thank you for saving us and for keeping us and for when we wander off and make a mess, uh, for cleaning up after us and drawing us back to yourself. Help us to keep moving forward in you. In Jesus' name, amen.